Fu Panda trilogy is probably the best trilogy in the DreamWorks catalog. This is one of the most perfect hero's journeys that subverts typical expectations while also having some of the most intimidating and sinister villains in any DreamWorks movie. So when I heard that we were getting Kung Fu Panda 4, I was pretty hyped. I have been with these movies since I was 6 years old and now 10 years after the release of the last movie, we finally get a sequel? One where all of the villains are returning? But then, somehow Megamind returned. Megamind is back. I'm kind of a big deal. And you're welcome. This is the worst DreamWorks movie of all time. It's a lazy cash grab that ruins one of their best IPs and characters by reducing them into pathetic idiot versions of themselves that only exist to launch a new show that nobody wants to watch featuring an annoying new younger character to upstage him at every moment. To me, this is highly upsetting because one of my favorite things about DreamWorks is how much they respect their IPs and how they use their sequels to improve them and make them more powerful instead of just seeing it as easy money. But then a bunch of leaks start getting released onto the platform and unfinished footage is starting to float around everywhere and I start to get a little concerned. Then I arrive at the theater and I see that the Universal logo appears in front of the movie. And oh no no no. I was not ready for what I was about to watch. When I saw the trailers I thought that the scene with Tai Long would be the first scene in the movie because this is a pretty good way to establish a villain. But the advertisements in this movie are actually pretty misleading. This scene actually happens at the end of the movie. So does the fight with Evil Poe and the scene where every villain joins in. Because you see, this movie isn't about Poe having to face all of his foes against with the chameleon like we thought. This is a story about passing on the torch. Poe is the dragon warrior, the hero and the protector of the land. But now Master Shifu tells him that it's time for him to move on and choose a successor to the title of dragon warrior. You see, at the end of the third movie, Master Uwe gave Poe this cool staff, which means that Poe has to now become the spiritual guardian. Why has none of this been ever mentioned before? Why didn't Uwe have this staff in the previous movies? Well, it's because they made it up. The last time we saw this staff, it was just a cool thing he got from Master Uwe. It wasn't some kind of special object. Just take it. I have a bigger one. But now it's the most important object in the universe. And that means that Poe cannot be the dragon warrior anymore. He now has to pass that on to Jen, voiced by the delightful Aquafina. Remember the swamp? No, 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 this has got to be one of the most annoying and unlikable characters that I've ever seen. And you know exactly why. She's Frey, she's Nimona, she's every annoying derivative MCU character we've seen. You know, the one who's always making snarky sarcastic comments while always making things worse for everyone. The one you're supposed to feel bad for because they had a rough childhood. And the one that you're supposed to like by the end because they get a half-baked redemption because they suddenly feel bad for all of the problems that they caused. The second she appeared, I knew that she was going to be the new Dragon Warrior. And this movie is just slowly realizing that I was right. Now they gotta work together to stop the brand new villain, the Chameleon. In the first Kung Fu Panda movie, Tai Lung is introduced with an awesome prison escape scene where he single-handedly destroys all of these rhino soldiers and blows up their facility. This establishes strength, a trait that is supported by the rest of the movie as he fights stronger and stronger opponents until reaching Poe. In 2, Lord Shen actually loses his first battle against Master Rhino until he suddenly pulls out a gun and shoots him. This establishes cunning. Shen isn't really a powerful character, but throughout the movie we see him use tricks and tactics in order to win his fights. In 3, Kai immediately fights Uwe and defeats him by stealing his chi, which I think is pretty stupid, but at least it was consistent and it established magic within the spirit realm. And this is a pretty fearsome power for the main guys to have to deal with. So how is the chameleon introduced? Well, she gets mad because she's called short and then pushes a guy down the stairs using her elephant power. And this is the most evil thing she does in the entire movie. This has got to be the most dry, stale plank of wood villain I have ever seen from any DreamWorks movie. This is MCU villain levels of bad. She has no wits, no charm, no personality, she's not funny in any moment, and she has probably one of the stupidest backstories I've seen. You see, the reason she's insecure about her size is because every dojo that she went to told her that she was too short to be there? The whole point of Kung Fu in this universe is that every animal has a particular style. That's how a character like Poe can be an amazing fighter despite seeming unfit to fight. But you're telling me that the chameleon is considered too small? What about Mantis? He's a literal insect. What about Master Shifu? Master Chicken? Even the stupid Aquafina character is smaller than her. Oh well, since she was too short to ride, she chose the next logical solution. Magic power. Just because a franchise has established magic as an option does not mean that you're allowed to just do whatever you want. Chi was a pretty conservative magic system. It's your life force that can be projected to others as well as manipulated to enhance your body's strength and dexterity. And by 
achieving inner peace, it allows you to extend that barrier slightly to manipulate other objects. But now there's just straight up sorcery in this world? Kung Fu Panda 3 kinda opened the door to this, but I was fine with it under the condition that the crazy Dragon Ball powers could only be used in the spirit world, and Kai, being from the spirit world, was allowed to have these crazy abilities. But now there's just magic that can do anything. And this means that Poe now gets exposition dreams where he learns the villain's plan? This is a complete misunderstanding of how magic works in this world. But hey, at least they've arrived at Juniper City, right? No! We gotta waste time going to this stupid tavern and fighting these worthless characters and having Poe walk for 30 minutes. Then Mr. Ping and Lee decide to follow Poe for no reason and now we gotta waste more time watching them go to this stupid tavern and fight these worthless characters and having them make these stupid jokes. And this movie is just not funny. Like it's not unfunny. Every 5 minutes you get like a funny joke. But for every hit there's like 20 misses because this movie is constantly sacrificing logic and reason for its humor and it hurts so much. Like there's that joke in the trailers where they have to sneak around these lizards and they keep making the most absurdly loud sounds but nothing in the world wakes them up and then Poe farts and they all wake up. None of this makes any sense. Why are they even sleeping? Why is there this video game obstacle? Every time we cut to Mr. Ping and Lee I just wanted to move on but then every time they cut to Poe and Jen I was like what? We're still here? This is where we see that Poe is learning how to be a spiritual guardian but all that means is him trying to use peace to sort out his problems which Poe can't do because Poe in this movie is stupid because we can't make the new characters good unless we lower the main guys down. This movie is constantly telling Poe that he's a small time hero and that nobody recognizes him which is stupid because he should be the most famous person in China. He stopped a war. Nothing happens in this movie until the climax where the movie just loses its mind. See the chameleon wanted to stab because it can open the portal to the spirit realm and it turns out that Zhen was actually a bad guy which means nothing because I never liked her. Then the chameleon traps Poe in an anti kung fu cage which sounds stupid on its own but it's actually even dumber because she forgot to put a floor in which allows Poe to escape. But then the chameleon turns into Zhen which is not how her powers work and tricks him so she can push him off a cliff. But then Mr. Pink comes in and Lee teleports out of nowhere and saves him. So if they hadn't decided to help Poe on a whim, Poe would have probably died here. So now we get the scene that we were waiting for. The chameleon is starting her evil plan to bring back the villains and Tai Lung finally comes in. And I gotta admit, this is the coolest fight in the movie. This is the only scene that actually feels lore accurate to these characters because honestly the fights kind of suck in this movie. But then the fight ends with the chameleon stealing Tai Lung's power, which is really weird. When I saw this in the trailer, I kind of figured that there would be more to this scene because this would never stop Tai Lung. He is way too fast for this. But also, to be able to steal powers like this is kind of OP. Why do you even need all of their powers if you can just instigate people like this? But also, once you have Tai Lung's powers, why do you need the others? Tai Lung gives you perfect reflexes and dexterity, so what is Shen gonna give you? This is such a fascinating idea, but all she ever does with it is turn into a giant cringe monster and flounder around. The only time she actually starts winning is when she turns into evil Poe, which she shouldn't be able to do because she doesn't have his powers yet. Speaking of which, why hasn't she stolen his powers yet? It's literally so easy, but she never tries it once. And that's it. She gets defeated by Zhen because obviously she has to get the final punch, and then Poe gets an honorary final punch so that you can't say that Zhen stole the glory. And they do it with the staff because it can make light dragons and instantly defeat anyone, thus ending the worst villain on the Kung Fu Panda series. But hey, it wouldn't be enough to just ruin the new characters, we gotta desecrate the dead too. Because now all of the villains look at Poe and they all bow down to him, and Tai Long is like, I guess I was wrong about you, Dragon Warrior. Take us home. What kind of Steven Universe bullshit is this? These are all characters that chose to die before admitting that they were wrong. But now we get this? But you know what the worst part is? I can totally see Tai Lung getting a redemption. He got so close to becoming a good guy in the first movie that I think that with enough time, in the movie that trailers promised, he could have gotten a full, satisfying character arc. A movie where you bring back all the villains and allow them to make their peace with Poe after suffering their defeat is something that I would give so much to see. So when all this movie does is put them in cages and have them do nothing, I get really mad. They wasted so much time in pointless crap, but we couldn't spend time with the actual characters? They couldn't even be bothered to get the voice actors back, which honestly might have been a good thing because Tai Lung has some of the worst lines. Every line he has is cringe. The movie just ends happily with Poe saving the day and Zhen is chosen to be the next dragon warrior. 
Skablam, guys. I'm just so tired of this trope. Why are heroes not allowed to stay cool? Nobody wants to see a story where the main character has to pass on the torch. Poe just started his journey, but now he has to give it up? And why does it always have to be to the most unlikable characters? And it doesn't help because throughout the entire story, I was just thinking, why can't Tigress be the one doing this? Can you imagine what this would be like? That after 16 years of waiting, as you're having to go through all the training that she goes through being denied the role, she finally gets to be the dragon warrior? That would be the coolest thing. Because I feel like most people will say that this movie is not that bad. Most people will say that it's mid, that it's inoffensive. Because yeah, this isn't the worst movie ever. It's got some good action, some good jokes, and some likable characters every once in a while. So I do feel kind of weird calling it a bad movie. But you know what this does remind me of? John Katzenberg said that this is supposed to be the first in a new trilogy of Kung Fu Panda movies. And looking at it that way, this does share an uncanny resemblance to The Force Awakens. From the misuse of its great characters and the abuse of the lore and world building, to how they're trying to force this past the torch theme onto Poe. And if that's where the trilogy is headed, then I dread the direction that Kung Fu Panda 5 is gearing toward. These movies are too important for me. I've had them since my childhood. Kung Fu Panda 2 is my favorite animated movie ever. To have DreamWorks has really abandoned their passion for sequels and is now just gonna soft reboot their franchises, then I do not want anything to do with it. That's all I got for this video, goodbye!